In the afternoon, the drama hosted its opening ceremony. The reincarnation drama could actually be considered a female lead-focused drama. Hence, the company initially really did not want Daniel to participate because the male lead's parts were not as impressionable or important as those of the female leads. The drama mainly showed scenes where the female leads faced off each other, so the male lead was mostly a subplot. Without Daniel, the male lead that the crew found was also young and handsome. He would also become a popular male lead if the drama aired shortly. However, he was a lot less influential than Daniel. Upon reaching the set, when Rachel got out of the car, she saw heaps and heaps of fans standing there holding signs with Rachel's name, which was a grand sight. Rachel never thought she would have fans coming today, so she quickly thanked them. The film site was chaotic, so Rachel could not stay long. She bowed to everyone and followed the staff inside. The film crew was very respectful towards Rachel and humbly welcomed her inside. Initially, when Rachel replaced the newcomer to become the female lead, everyone was a little hesitant. After all, Rachel left for a very long time. Many artists actually could not go back to their initial status when they returned. One cannot leave this industry for long because the fans would run away and get attracted by new and fresh things. Few people would turn back and look at the original artist. After all, humans liked new things and disliked old things. Especially in this technological age, there were tons of newcomers being pushed out. There was no lack of interesting people, interesting topics, or interesting artists. So what if she returned? How many people from the audience would actually watch her? They were almost sick of her in the past, so no one would be happy to see her again. Unexpectedly, when Rachel participated in a variety show, the Drama Festival, her influence did not decrease and instead caused another commotion. Thus, everyone finally agreed that she was definitely someone who could recover her initial glory, and it seemed like she had a chance. When they came today, they say heaps of fans, so everyone quickly welcomed Rachel in. After a short while, Patty arrived. When Patty got out of the car and saw the people inside, she thought it was strange that there were so many people surrounding them. After she alighted, all she saw were fans. Her eyebrows furrowed. She felt a headache from looking at Rachel's name everywhere, so she did not look again as if she was too lazy to see them. When she walked inside and saw Rachel, she also had a nonchalant attitude. She sat down and said, Rachel, we meet again. I'm young and ignorant. Because we are collaborating this time, if I offend you in the past, please forgive this pesky person as a generous person, Rachel. Rachel hummed and asked, Since you already admitted you are a pesky person, what else can I say? Patty's eyes stopped moving, and then she looked at Rachel with more anger. She just offhandedly said that. But Rachel also did not answer by the book. Rachel smiled and stood up. She stopped putting on makeup and went out. Rachel could not be bothered to play tricks or beat around the bush. She only had a simple thought when she came back. She acted because she liked it and wanted to do it. So she did not want to do anything that made her unhappy and just followed her heart's desire. The opening ceremony was starting soon. After the ceremony, there were a lot of people standing in between Rachel and Patty, so they did not have much interaction. The drama was mainly about the fight between the two of them, but it seemed like it was true in reality as well. After it ended, it was time for media interviews and questions. When the MC announced it, the reporters immediately swarmed over and surrounded Rachel to listen to her interview. 
Because the reporters knew that Patty was not an easy person to interview, as she did not know how to speak well and had no unique traits, they did not bother to interview her. Patty did not expect such a scene and looked at them angrily. She wanted to yell at them, but she could not do so. Thus, she gritted her teeth and glared at those damn reporters, already yelling at them, all in her mind. Rachel was in the limelight, and no one could overtake her. Therefore, Patty angrily walked away, immediately asking the staff to spread rumors about Rachel. Go hire internet ghostwriters and ask them to attack her fatally. Say that she stole the role and acted all stuck up. Anyway, whatever way they could attack her, I want it all done. Patty thought that she had been very unhappy since she was being oppressed just now. So she simply said, If not, you can also expose the photo of Aaron and me, too. It would be breaking news, and I could see how she can snatch everyone's attention then. What could be more eye-catching than Aaron's rumor? The staff member's hands shook watching her. They had to do it. Knowing this madam's personality, she would throw a huge tantrum if they did not do it. But if they did, that was Aaron. Would they not have a problem? Aaron picked her up immediately after the ceremony. While they were on their way back, Rachel called the preschool to ask how was George in school. The preschool said that everything was all right. However, Aaron already informed the preschool beforehand that every afternoon, George must have a few hours to do professional training. So the preschool had to hide this from Rachel. Aaron watched her make the call and said, Okay, Anna is coming back today. We have to go back and visit her. Oh, right. I haven't seen Anna since I was back. You won't be able to see her. She just had a fight with Blake, and she is with her kids at the moment. Rachel asked, They still fight now? Not as often, but occasionally, they will have a serious fight. Rachel felt like this pair was incredible. Soon, they arrived at the Nixon residence. Anna gave birth to a girl. Her name was Catherine. So naturally, everyone called her Kathy. This little princess was born a few days later than George, so she could be considered as George's younger sister. Once they entered, they saw Kathy sitting on Pamela's legs while eating a large apple. Anna saw Rachel enter and shouted with surprise, Little sister-in-law, sob! I haven't seen you in so long! She launched herself at Rachel to hug her. Rachel felt her passion once again. She was hugged tightly and only released after a while. Rachel asked, I heard you ran away to another country after the fight this time. Anna waved her hands and said, Don't mention what happened in the past. Uh, why don't I see my little nephew? Aaron said from behind, Busy with school. However, Rachel went over first to look at little Catherine. Looks so much like her father. But luckily, her dad is handsome, so she is still very pretty. Anna sighed. So wasted. Ah, it makes me sad speaking about it. Rachel looked down and pinched little Catherine's face. Looking at such a cute little face, she could not control herself but to touch and kiss it. At the same time, she told a smiling Pamela, I actually also want a little girl. Upon hearing it, Aaron immediately replied, If you want it, we can have it immediately. We can go in and make a baby now. Rachel looked up and glared at him. Anna said, Brother, you don't have to be so straightforward. Aaron asked, You have a problem with that? Anna rolled her eyes. No problem, no problem, okay? When they were having a meal, Anna kept telling Rachel to bring her child together so that they could go out and play. It would be cute to let the older brother take care of his younger sister. 
After the meal, Anna asked Rachel, I saw you starting to film after your return. Have you been busy lately? Rachel said, We haven't started filming, so I am temporarily free. That's great. Let's go out together later. I haven't seen you in a long time. Let's go out, drink something, and have some fun. Aaron said, You can just say that you don't want to go home now and want to continue playing around. Anna looked up and glared at him. Don't come and talk about things amongst us women. Aaron meant that Anna did not want to go and listen to Blake apologize and was planning to continue staying outside. Blake liked to make people angry, but Anna was also too stubborn. This was why the duo made others so speechless because their personalities directly clashed. Rachel, of course, nodded and agreed. When they went out, however, Aaron followed up. Anna already left her children here, so she turned back to look at Aaron and said, It's a girl's outing. Are you also following us? Aaron's expression remained unchanged. He pushed the door to drive the car and turned his back at her to say, I'm worried that you will influence her badly. Rachel felt done with him, and Anna even rolled her eyes. The three of them boarded the car and went to a shop outside. After they entered, as Anna was a regular who had not visited in a while, the manager personally came over to greet them when he saw her. Miss Nixon had not been here for some time, the manager said. Yes, I went overseas for some time, Anna said. The manager saw Rachel, who was behind, and paused for a while to recognize it was her. However, they had to maintain professionalism. In these sorts of places, they should not speak about anyone they met. It was best if they could pretend they did not see anyone. He brought the few of them to a booth inside. This was an atmospheric Chicago-styled bar with a quiet atmosphere and patrons drinking red wine or drinks. Not a lot of people were inside or singing so they were just quietly sitting down and chatting. Anna said, The alcohol here is extremely delicious, so I used to come here to drink in the past. Today I shall introduce you to their cocktails, okay? Rachel said, Okay, I can drink. But if I am drunk, you have to be responsible for carrying me back. <laughs> okay, I will. But I'm afraid brother will not let me touch you. After all, once you are drunk, he will have the chance to have drunken, chaotic sex with you. Anna laughed and looked at Aaron at the side. Aaron coolly held the glass and drank a sip of the plain lemon water. No need. I can have chaotic sex anytime. There's no need for alcohol at all. Rachel continued to glare at him and said, Yes, a shameless person is always shameless. He doesn't need alcohol to gain courage. Aaron looked at her. Don't you like me for the shamelessness? You... Aaron raised his eyebrows. Opposite them, Anna could not stand it anymore. Hey, I'm in the middle of a fight here. Can you think about my feelings? You still have the face to talk about the fight? You were the one who wanted to marry him. Now that your child is so big, you still have the face to talk about the fight. When your child grows older, you will continue fighting and your child will also laugh at you. I... Anna twisted her hands. She did not want to, but when two people were together, there was bound to be friction between them. She originally thought that the longer they stayed together, the smaller the friction. However, that was not the case. Instead, the longer they were together, the easier it was to have friction between them. This time, because of the company's project, the two of them had a fight which almost caused an internal struggle in the board of directors. In the end, Blake's father had to negotiate. If not, everyone thought the husband and wife were going to call it quits. If not, why would they team up with the board of directors to gain power and fight one another? For those who did not know, 
They really thought that the couple was fighting for power. But although they were obstinate about their work, they did not care much about power or money. It was just a fight between the two of them. Initially, they just wanted to win over the other, so in the end, the board of directors came to an understanding, and those conspirators also got mad. After negotiations, Anna got mad, left first, and stayed away for two months, until the old man said he missed Kathy, so she had no choice but to return. Anna asked, What's the point of saying this now? If not, am I supposed to get a divorce? After a short while, she saw a tall man in suits standing at the door. His tie was astray, as if he ran up here. He breathlessly stopped at the door, saw the people inside, and placed his hands on his hips. He took a deep breath and called, Anna. Who else could it be besides Blake? Anna froze. She was initially weirded out, but after she saw the wordless Aaron and then looked outside, she realized that he had no change in facial expression. She realized who betrayed her. Aaron! Aaron coolly said, I am giving you a chance. Regardless of whether you want a divorce or to return home, what is the point if you don't go home and resolve it quickly? Anna looked at Rachel. How can you not reel him in and look at him? How can he do that? Rachel shrugged and looked at Aaron. I think he didn't say anything wrong. It is not good for you to keep living outside, right? Anna said weakly, Rachel, you've been negatively influenced by my brother after being with him. Huh. Blake had already arrived in front of them at this moment. He looked at Aaron and Rachel, then he directly asked Anna, Where is Kathy? What? Anna looked up to drink the water in her cup as if she could not bother to look at him. You took Kathy away, so how dare you ask me what? Kathy is my daughter. Why do I need to ask you if I want to take her away? Anna rebutted. Blake said, Yes, she is your daughter, but she is also my daughter, right? Can you have her alone? Huh, how can I not have her? There are so many men. You are not the only one who can do this. You... Blake's face paled with anger. Blake looked at Rachel and Aaron. Then he pulled Anna up. You come out with me. What are you doing? Come out and we'll talk. No! Quickly, don't disturb others here. Blake pulled Anna. Anna blushed, but could only be pulled out after looking at her surroundings. While being pulled away, she resisted and pushed at his hands. Let go! I can walk by myself! Rachel watched the two of them walk away. She pulled Aaron's hand. When did you privately notice Blake? Aaron took her hand and shook the phone in his hands. Rachel nodded blankly and looked at Aaron. While he was expressionless, he had so many cheap tricks up his sleeves. Rachel noticed how few customers this bar had. There was only one full table where they were sitting. However, the decoration here was extravagant, so she could not help but wonder how the bar earned money when it had so few customers until she looked down. The tag on the wine said one bottle of wine cost a thousand dollars. She swallowed her saliva, looked at Aaron and back at the place. This place seems to be very fancy. Aaron nodded. I have never been here. Don't worry. What? Rachel was a little confused at his response. Aaron tapped her little face lightly. I don't like bars and don't like drinking, so I won't come here to casually find women. Don't worry. Rachel then understood and laughed internally. She purposefully teased him. I wouldn't even know if you really came. If not, I'll let you install a location tracker on my phone. How about that? Rachel froze and looked at him. How could she not trust him? 
it was completely unnecessary. She was very lucky to have a man who she could completely trust without any location tracking. She thought she was probably luckier than most people. Not because of Aaron's status, but because of the stability of their marriage. In a marriage, a trusting pair was the best relationship. She shook her head and said, No need. If you want to go, it would be useless. If you don't want to go, what is the point of installing it, right? Upon hearing that, Aaron smiled gently and kissed her fair face. Meanwhile, inside, Avery was walking out with a man. This person was her cousin, Bruce Shepard. Then we have an agreement. I will definitely go to your next birthday party. Sure, your family had been busy with moving ever since you came here. Now that you have settled, we have a long way to go. Let's go. I'll ask someone to send you out. Avery sighed. I'm not too bothered by these things. Ah, uh, but my illness. I'm not sure if I will still be around tomorrow. How can you say that? You're not young anymore, so you can start a family and live a great life. It will be good for your illness as well, Bruce said. Avery shook her head. Where would there be a man who wants a sickling like me? Bruce saw Avery a few times when he was still young. That time, because she had hereditary heart disease, she could not really play with everyone else. So she looked quite pitiful sitting there alone. Bruce smiled. You are so pretty. Of course there are a lot of men who want to marry you. Avery's eyes flashed. However, there was only one man she wanted to marry. She looked back at Bruce. What kind of girls do you like? Bruce said, Probably someone like you. Didn't most men like weak girls that needed protecting? Avery asked, Really? But I know a girl who I think is very shrewish and speaks rudely. However, there are still guys that like her. She thought about Rachel and felt that Rachel gave her such an impression. Bruce asked, How could anyone like a girl like that? Avery smiled and felt slightly comforted. Yes, I also thought it was strange. I thought most men would not like that type of woman. Impossible. If a woman is too shrewish, the man will only feel frustrated. An obedient woman like you is the man's true dream. Well, judging by that, you seem to have someone you like. Bruce smiled at her. Avery blushed. Not really. Avery did not know many men. After hearing what Bruce said, she secretly thought that Rachel was not considered a big deal after all. Aaron could be just fooled and thus liked her. And at that moment, when the two of them went out, they suddenly saw Aaron and Rachel were leaning towards each other, talking to each other sweetly. Rachel seemed to have said something that made Aaron raise the corner of his lips and smile charmingly. He happily looked at the woman next to him, tapping her cheeks. That look was homely and beautiful, making people's hearts melt as they watched. But the woman next to him was Rachel. Avery froze as she did not expect to meet the two of them here. Didn't Aaron usually never enter such places? It must be Rachel who brought him here. Rachel did not know how to do anything. She only negatively influenced Aaron and made things troublesome for him. Avery thought as she saw Rachel turn around and look at the two of them behind her. Rachel thought that she was seeing things, but she saw Avery and Bruce Shepard standing together. Avery thought she saw her, so she quickly said, Miss Rachel, Aaron. Her gaze while watching Aaron was obviously different, which made Rachel feel nauseous. Avery, 
Rachel raised her head as she looked at Bruce about to speak. However, Avery first told Bruce, This is the girl I was talking about. Bruce froze. She was talking about Rachel. The shrewish girl was, in fact, Rachel. So the two of them... Bruce had never heard external rumors, so he did not know some people thought Aaron and Avery were involved in the past. She thought Bruce already knew Aaron was married, so he never thought in that direction. As the only young mistress of the Smith family, would she even fall for a married man? But to think about it now, if the married man was Aaron, everything would be different. Avery wanted to continue taunting her because that feeling made her feel great. She hoped Bruce would help her say a few bad things about Rachel so that Aaron would know how other men looked at women like Rachel. However, Bruce looked at Rachel and suddenly said, You didn't even tell me that you were coming back. Why? Am I so unimportant in your heart? Avery's face paled immediately. She looked at Bruce in shock, her mouth ajar and eyes bulged out. Rachel quickly said, Of course not. I was busy after I returned. I also did not know if you were still in the nation. However, Aaron immediately shielded her. He looked at Bruce and coldly asked, Why are you important in her heart? Bruce tilted his head and teasingly looked at Aaron. Why? How about you ask her? Am I important in her heart? Aaron looked at Rachel threateningly, as if he was saying that if she dared to say yes, he would let her suffer today. Rachel was being glared at by Aaron, while being stared at by Bruce. She speechlessly did not know what to say. Bruce was her teacher and friend. How could he be not important? She said, This I... Rachel looked at the two of them and quickly tried to start a conversation. Why are you here, Bruce? Bruce Shepard said, This place is run by my family. Huh? Aaron said, No wonder business is so slow. Rachel thought that this seemed different from what he had said earlier. Bruce said, Huh? I remember that your sister is a regular here. She spends at least a thousand every month. Aaron said, It's fine to give handouts to the poor from time to time. Rachel truly could not believe Aaron. Could he be less rude? At the side, Avery only felt sad after her initial surprise. She looked at Bruce and the rest. Do you know each other? Rachel looked at them as well and asked more or less the same thing. Why are you guys together? Bruce said, Oh, this is my younger cousin. The corners of Rachel's lips twitched. What a small world. But it made sense when she thought about it, like the marriage of alliance between the Nixon family and the Cooper family. It was understandable that Shepard and the Smith family were relatives. She could also imagine the complicated web of relationships among wealthy families. Aaron said, that's enough. I don't know if Anna will still come back or not. We'll make a move first. He grabbed Rachel's hand. Beside her, Bruce also grabbed her other hand. Hey, we just met. Why are you leaving? Rachel, you can't be treating your mentor like this. He who teaches you for a day is your father for life. You can't kick someone to the curb when they've outlived their usefulness. Aaron turned to see that Bruce had already grabbed Rachel's hand. His initial calm gaze had already turned completely dark. The corners of his lips turned up in dissatisfaction. How dare he touch Rachel? Aaron yanked hard and pulled Rachel so she was behind him. He then looked at Bruce sternly. Bruce refused to admit defeat. Aaron, what do you mean? Can't I even say a few words to Rachel? 
She's the wife that you married, not the slave that you keep locked up. Bruce, you dare say that again? Why, am I wrong? Bruce. When Aaron's tone turned severe, the Nixon family's bodyguards outside nearly rushed in. Bruce narrowed his eyes. Fend them all off. Outsiders are prohibited from taking even one step into this place. Let me see if anyone actually starts smashing things in my shop for no reason. He immediately instructed the security guards in the pub. The security guards rushed forward to block them. Although the people that Bruce trained could not compare to the Nixon family's bodyguards, who were professionally trained and were seasoned fighters, they were ultimately not ordinary either. The Nixon family's bodyguards would not attack for no reason. As the security guards looked at the bodyguards who wore the emblem of the Nixon family, they did not dare to recklessly provoke them either. The two groups of people stood at the entrance in direct confrontation. Similarly, there were also two tall and well-built men in a standoff. As for Rachel... She was about to go insane beside them. What were they trying to do? Hey, stop messing around, you two. There are still other customers around. Don't become a laughing stock, all right? Rachel said. Bruce looked at Rachel. It's fine. This is my territory. Anyone who dares to mock me will definitely be kicked out. You should know me well. I just have a bad temper know him well? Why did Rachel have to know him well? Hearing his deliberate provocation, Aaron imploded with anger again. Bruce, I think you have a death wish. Rachel looked at the two of them in disbelief. Seeing that they were about to start a fight immediately, she reached out her arms to push the two of them apart. That's enough, you two. Don't behave like children, all right? You... After being pushed aside, Aaron took a step forward first and wanted to say something, but Rachel immediately stopped him. That's enough, Aaron. I'll go back overseas right now if you continue stirring up trouble. Although there was still anger in Aaron's eyes, he had no choice but to stand there, unmoving, Rachel proceeded to say to Bruce, You too. Stop talking rubbish. Why are you behaving like a child and provoking him for no reason? How old are you two already? Both of you are even bosses and presidents of companies. You don't even feel embarrassed about making such a fuss in front of your employees. Aaron's face clouded over even more. Around him, all the bodyguards and security guards looked at him and thought that he was about to blow up in anger. They had never personally seen Aaron get angry before. However, they felt that he would definitely be very frightening when he was angry. However, contrary to what they had expected, Aaron merely stood there silently. His head was bowed, and he did not dare to say a word of rebuttal at all. He even seemed like a child who had just been reprimanded by his mother. Even though he felt aggrieved, he absolutely did not dare to show it. This Aaron, he pampered his little woman way too much. In front of so many people, he was not at all angry and even obeyed Rachel's words completely. As for Bruce, he could only stand there and glance at Rachel calmly. All right, then. I just wanted to say a few more words to you. Anyway, I'm back, and I don't have plans to leave either. We'll have plenty of opportunities in the future. How dare she even say that there would be opportunities in the future? Aaron glared at Bruce unyieldingly. If he hadn't helped Rachel back then, he would have gotten rid of him a long time ago. How dare he lust after Rachel? He was not even allowed to have such thoughts. Furthermore, he even provoked him repeatedly. Just then, Blake entered. 
Upon seeing the situation, he was completely shocked as well. Good lord, what's happening here? I haven't seen you guys in a while. Is a world war going to start here? Bruce's expression became more relaxed. He turned around to look at Blake. Blake looked as if he had just settled his family affairs. He had a relaxed expression now, and he seemed more careless, as if he was very interested in joining in the fun. He looked at Rachel with his hands in his pockets and smiled. He said, Rachel, you're finally back. If you stayed elsewhere any longer, Aaron's arm would develop a six-pack. He was poking fun at Aaron for typically using his hands to satisfy his biological needs. Rachel's face turned completely red when she heard this. As expected, Blake behaved extremely inappropriately. He walked over and stood beside Rachel. However, he had not expected Rachel to have something to do with this little tyrant, Bruce. But when he looked at the two of them, there was something quite amazing about them. It seemed that the two of them resembled each other slightly. Their features did look different, but their dispositions and their face shapes were a little similar. After getting out of his trance, Bruce looked at the two of them in confusion before saying to Rachel, All right, today's meeting was a little rushed. Let's meet again and talk about things in detail next time. Rachel immediately said, Yes, yes. She was thankful that Blake had arrived at a time like this. She quickly pushed Aaron and said, Let's go, let's go. We'll make our move first. Why has Anna disappeared? Did she leave already? Aaron stared at Bruce unwaveringly, glaring at him in a threatening manner. Bruce slowly stuck both his hands into his pockets. He looked at Aaron and scoffed, refusing to back down as well. However, the good thing was that Aaron was pushed aside in no time. Thereafter, Aaron's subordinates also followed him out. Avery did not expect Rachel to be acquainted with so many people in high society. Bruce had clearly said that he did not like her, but he had actually tried to take her away directly from Aaron. Avery looked on in a daze. The expression on her face was slightly complicated. After Aaron and Rachel returned home, Aaron went into the room immediately and slammed the door. George was still at home. He looked up at Rachel when she entered. Mom, what happened? Rachel said, he's playing a prank on you. At times, she truly felt that Aaron was even younger than George. She went into the room and looked at Aaron, who was standing by the window. She said from behind him, hey, are you angry? Aaron did not speak. Rachel approached him and pulled the back of his clothes. You're really angry? She caressed his back from behind him. You were in the wrong in this matter to begin with. He just likes to joke around, but you actually took it seriously and picked a fight with him. It looked so bad. It looked bad on you and on me as well. We gave people a chance for idle gossip for no reason. Furthermore, things were fine. Starting a fight was wrong to begin with. However, Aaron still did not turn around. She did not continue reasoning with him and immediately hugged Aaron from behind. Of course, he was more rational than she was. What he needed was something else. Aaron froze and was even about to push her arms away when he felt Rachel's hands creep under his shirt. She started touching him while moving her hands upward. His hot chest immediately became incomparably rigid. The instant her body came into contact with his, his anger miraculously dissipated. This woman, seriously, only knew to attract unwanted attention. But when he thought about it, Bruce would not take a fancy to just anyone either. 
He did have good taste. Rachel attracted people so easily because she was so good. However, she was still his woman right now. When he thought about it this way, of course all his anger disappeared. Especially when her body had already wound itself around him like a snake, arousing his entire body. He was weak against her. Even though he was so angry, he was still weak. He was livid when he turned his head and swiftly grabbed her recklessly moving arms. Fine, you're the one who asked for this. Don't wail later. Rachel seemed to see the fiery anger still burning in his eyes. It felt as if she was going to be completely engulfed in flames. He pushed her down without hesitation. Rachel immediately regretted her actions when she saw how he looked like a hungry wolf. She really should not have casually provoked him. That night, Rachel called Bruce. Bruce said, Your company even issued me a dividend. Rachel knew that Brace had stocks in the company too. Although it was a token investment, the sum was not large. She had put it in his name back then and had only given it to him because she wanted it to look presentable at the very least. Rachel said, Mr. C2 probably can't be bothered with such petty cash. Do you think I'm so wealthy that I can hide the sky with one hand as your husband can? I care about petty cash. If I knew that your company would expand to what it is today, I would have invested more. Rachel was very happy when she heard this. This compliment is not bad. You're quite good now. You even learned how to flatter people. Only towards you, Bruce thought to himself on the other end. But how could he verbalize it? He asked, By the way, are you on good terms with Blake? Rachel said, Our relationship is quite good, but we haven't seen each other for a long time, too. Why? It's nothing. I only knew that you had a good relationship with him when I saw the two of you together today. I'm the one who was surprised. I only knew that you guys were related when I saw you with Avery today. Yes, but she was always in Europe before this, so we didn't spend much time together. It's normal to have such relations anyway. After all, there are so many marriages to create connections among wealthy families. Are you and Blake related? No way. My family is an insignificant family. We have no background at all. The Cooper family is such a prominent family. If our family could claim connections with theirs even a little bit, I wouldn't be in such a dire state either. <laughs> Rubbish! Is this something that Mr. Nixon should be saying? You're being so ridiculous. How could I be related to the Cooper family? Have you forgotten how I nearly got into a fight with his younger sister? <laughs> All right, I did indeed forget. But when I saw you stand beside him today, I thought you guys resembled each other a little. That's why I said that. Rachel asked, What's wrong with your eyes? <laughs> All right, I was just commenting. I'll look for you at your company next time and we can talk in detail again. Okay. At the Glazed Tile Palace, Linda said to Edward, I got someone to mimic Ma'am's voice and call this number. We used a hidden number, too. This is the recording. Edward took the recording from her and listened to it. Sure enough, the person was negotiating with her. Blair's voice said very clearly that she could not give him a lot of money, but the other party said that she had to give him five million dollars, otherwise he would definitely spread the news and destroy her name and reputation. Blair bargained for a long time. However, in the end, she had no choice but to agree helplessly. Edward nodded. Have you tracked down this person? Yes. We have already followed your instructions and tracked him down. Although they did not know who this person was, and he was also using a number that they could not trace, Edward had a suspect in mind. 
Thus, it was enough for Linda to simply follow this suspect. This also meant that Linda was keeping a close eye on Franklin and Bethany to find the suspect. In the middle of the night, Franklin left the house and strolled a few rounds around the neighborhood. He ultimately ended up outside a pub. People seeking enjoyment and fun were still loitering everywhere. The streets were filled with people, and no one would notice this place either. Franklin said, Did you get the goods? The person immediately replied, I got it, I got it, here it is, but my money. Franklin handed him the money in exchange for the goods. Because neither person believed the other, a deal like this could not be conducted online. It was basically a rule of the trade to hand over the goods in exchange for the money. Otherwise, Franklin would not have made the trip earlier. When he got the USB drive, Franklin looked ahead calmly. I didn't expect it to actually be you. Just then, a gloomy voice traveled from behind with a disappointed tone. Franklin's face shone with a slight surprise. He turned around to see Edward and his subordinates make their way over swiftly. Franklin's eyes darted. He looked at the bodyguards Edward had brought with him. Each and every one of them was ready for battle. Franklin asked, What are you trying to do now? Are you going to arrest me and take me to the Natural Security Agency? Edward said, Franklin, Blair is innocent. Why must you cause her trouble? Franklin looked at him. Don't tell me you don't know why. Edward frowned. For Bethany's sake? Franklin, you and I are brothers, but now you betrayed me so easily because of a woman. A woman? She's just like any other woman to you. But to me, she's the woman I love. Edward shook his head and smiled grimly while looking at him. However, the gap between the two of them had existed from a long time ago. It was just that his sneaky actions this time made Edward even more disappointed in him. Franklin had initially thought that Blair would definitely fall prey to incidents like these, since she was not that smart. But he did not think that she would actually tell Edward first. He acknowledged his bad luck, but found it a pity that he still did not manage to help Bethany. He tossed aside the USB drive in his hand and looked at Edward and the people behind him. What exactly do you want? Just tell me straight. Edward asked, What do you think I should do with you? Franklin laughed out loud once again. What is Blair to you? Because of Blair, you first threw aside our brotherhood and Bethany. You did not see her sadness at all. You didn't care about all the years we spent together. If you still want to continue being my brother now, then let me go and make Blair leave. Otherwise, we definitely will not be able to continue being friends. Right now, you're not the Edward I know. Let you go? And then just let you continue on your misguided course? Franklin walked up to him. If not, what do you want? Come on, tell me what you want. His body immediately came into contact with Edward, and their bodies collided with one another. Franklin's intention to pick a fight was already completely obvious. Edward did not say a word as he stood there. After Franklin collided with him, he took a step backward. Come on, come on, come at me if you're a man, Franklin continued provoking him, yelling at him with a ferocious expression on his face. Edward released his pent-up emotions and swiftly grabbed Franklin by the collar. Franklin, listen up. I won't allow you to mess around like this again. You want to fight me, right? Then we'll fight. I can tell you straight that I'm not afraid of ruining our relationship, nor am I afraid of making a big deal out of this. But you better remember not to regret this. He immediately shouted to the people behind him, Seize Franklin! His bodyguards rushed forward. However, Franklin belonged to a family of influential military men. The servants of the Martise family trailed behind him. 
All of them were former soldiers of special forces. They were fiercely loyal to the Martise family. The bodyguards would not necessarily gain any advantage from starting a fight with them. Just then, Franklin's subordinates also rushed to the front line. They formed a barrier in front of Franklin and did not allow anyone to come near him. Edward looked at him. Are you going to defy the law now? Are you going to go against the entire glazed tile palace? You are not the law, Edward. What right do you have to arrest me? Franklin shouted. Edward said, The USB drive you threw aside is evidence of your fraud, you swindler. Ha! Even if I'm a fraud, the President's guards still shouldn't be the ones arresting me, right? The President's personal guards have the power to act first, and then talk later when they sense danger to protect the President's safety, Edward said. Fine. Then come get me. Come and catch me. What good will it do you at all to break off relations with the Martise family just because of Blair? Have you forgotten that our family has always been leading the nation's top military cavalry? So many of the generals in the nation are my father's students. Edward said, If I can't even protect my own woman, then how can I be good enough to protect the countless citizens? I don't care who you are and who I will offend. If anyone touches my woman, I definitely won't let him off easily. Franklin was stunned. He was using his position as the president to oppress him just because of a woman. Did he really not care about anything anymore? Edward raised his hand up a little and said to the people behind him, Capture Franklin. Hearing his command, Franklin's heart hardened immediately as well. All of you, attack! You don't have to care about their status. You only need to remember which family you serve. The president's bodyguards instantly started fighting with the Martise family's servants. The bodyguards threw kicks and punches, and the servants of the Martise family did not show weakness either. In no time, the narrow alley seemed to turn into a battleground for a gang fight. From afar, some people thought at first that some hoodlums were engaging in a fight. However, as they looked at their movements, which were so much more exciting than in the movies, they could not stop staring after some time. This was definitely not a typical fight. This was a fight that was loaded with meaning. Edward looked at Franklin with these people in between them. The distance between the two of them increased in an instant. Edward narrowed his eyes dangerously at him. Franklin scoffed and walked through the back of the alley under the protection of the Martise family. Edward immediately called the police headquarters and instructed someone to issue an arrest warrant, spread the news everywhere, and to put Franklin on the wanted list. Thereafter, he instructed his guards to capture all of the people present who were involved in the fight on the basis that they were openly defying the law. Then he again instructed his guards to handcuff those who resisted on the basis that they had attacked public officers. If there was no other way, they were permitted to shoot. The night seemed calm and tranquil, but the news of the incident spread immediately throughout high society. The small piece of news triggered a series of chain reactions in an instant. Edward had publicly broken off relations with the influential military family, the Martise family. The two families had directly started a fight on the streets outside, and it seemed like they were going to oppose each other to the end. Meanwhile, vague rumors were spreading outside. Someone uploaded some photos online saying that he had seen people fighting the previous night. It was a group fight involving people who had terrific and professional fighting skills, and it looked remarkable. But these photos were deleted in an instant. News like this was known to a minority of people. It could not be helped that they were spreading rumors among themselves. But the news could not be seen by people on a large scale. Everyone knew that the two of them were childhood friends. 
Now that the two of them had started fighting out of the blue, and had even blown the matter up to this scale, everyone could not help but feel a little disappointed. It seemed that these people who were at the center of power did not lead such beautiful lives either. They seemed to have the power to hide the sky with one hand and to obtain anything they wanted. However, in reality, anything they did at the heart of the struggle caused waves. It made one sigh. However, since the two families had started fighting now, everyone was speculating who would emerge triumphantly. On a superficial level, one had military power and the other had political power. They seemed equally matched. Still, Edward had the entire Nixon family to back him up. So it could be said that he had financial power as well. Therefore, Franklin had no edge over him either. However, was Edward really planning to engage in a full-on fight with him? If so, Edward would actually gain nothing at all. Although everyone knew of these prominent wealthy families, most of them kept a very low profile. As a result, ordinary people could only hear some updates about them from the rumors. It was really quite uncommon for such a large-scale fight to suddenly break out among them. So many people were watching in anticipation. But everyone wanted to see what the exact outcome of this rare fight among wealthy families would be. After Franklin returned to the Martise residence, the family sent him abroad in haste. Even though a child of their family had caused trouble this time, the family was not to be trifled with either. They could not possibly allow Edward to take Franklin away and send him straight to prison. However, Franklin was still unwilling to leave. He felt that he still had unfinished business. He had yet to complete what he wanted to do for Bethany. But how could the Martise family allow him to stay? Franklin's father said bluntly, Franklin, you must leave now. Even though Edward won't dare to touch us so easily, the Nixon family has been secretive for the past few years. No one knows what other powers are behind them either. If you don't leave, I can't be sure that Edward won't do anything to you. Leave right now. I've already made arrangements for a plane to take off directly from the military base. No one will dare to stop the plane. Leave right now. Don't stay here even for another second. Father, just give me another day. That's enough. If not for the fact that you are my only son, I would have thrown you straight into jail right now. His brow trembled and the veins in his face were throbbing in anger. He looked much more frightening than he usually did. He pushed Franklin out of the house without hesitation and instructed, Protect, young master. Franklin was furious inside. He clenched his teeth and did not continue arguing. However, he was not going to leave just like that. With this thought in mind, he continued walking towards the military base. At home, Rachel had yet to get wind of the news. Aaron had not informed her about these worrisome matters. He only told her to focus on filming and leave the rest to him. As a result, Rachel went straight to the filming location and began filming while Aaron stayed at home to look after George. In reality, George was way too independent. So Rachel had never really felt like she was his mother. Because of this, Rachel was always very regretful that she had not given birth to a girl. If she had a daughter who clung to her all the time, she would probably feel much more like a mother. This did not affect her love for George, but her love for him was much more rational. After all, he was her child. Furthermore, he was such a brilliant and handsome son. How could she not love George? At the filming location, Rachel had been allocated the best hotel room as well. Although Rachel had not specially requested for it, of course, they did not dare to make Rachel feel aggrieved. 
Patty had asked for the presidential suite upon entering the production and said that she would not stay anywhere but there. As a result, the production team could only arrange the same type of room for Rachel. Otherwise, they would appear to be brushing over Rachel. They dared not to do that. To be honest, Rachel really did not care about such things. She would have stayed in any accommodation that they arranged. Upon seeing Rachel, Patty looked like she could not be bothered with her as well. However, just when Rachel had moved in, Bruce came to visit her. Bruce's arrival immediately stirred up excitement among the members of the production team. When they saw Bruce swagger his way into Rachel's room, they even thought to themselves that Rachel was still in contact with Bruce. The director Sanchez had worked with Rachel before and knew about her relationship with Mr. Situ. However, it was Bruce who had openly admitted that he had a one-sided crush on Rachel. He did not expect this young master to still be in love with her now. His feelings had lasted quite long. Rachel was not the only one in her room. The assistants, whom the company had allocated to her, were also here. When they saw Bruce enter the room, they quickly and tactfully left. Bruce asked, Aaron didn't make things difficult for you when you went back, right? What do you think? Rachel still felt angry thinking about it. They had a tussle for no reason and even pulled her into it. By the way, what did you say that day about me and Blake looking similar? Rachel asked. Bruce said, oh, it's nothing. I found myself very stupid when I thought about it later. I just thought that your dispositions are very similar. All right, then. Perhaps good-looking people all have similarities. Rachel smiled in self-satisfaction as she spoke. Bruce laughed out loud. You're really candid. Why are you running a pub now? Rachel asked. Bruce said, I'm not just running a bar, either. I opened the bar for some casual fun so that I have a place to hold gatherings as well. I can also host some guests. Rachel nodded her head in understanding. It made sense, too. How could wealthy people run only one business? Anyway, it seemed that he was operating it merely for fun. I just bought a fencing team, and I'm also sponsoring a few fencing competitions. I guess you can say that I'm taking part in fencing again and also making some contributions to the sport. Really? That's great, Rachel said. I fence once in a while too, but I haven't gone recently since I've been too busy. Bruce looked at Rachel. In actual fact, he had to thank her for giving him hope and teaching him how to live life. Now he understood many things and he did not live his life so disparatedly. He felt that he was indeed doing much better than in the past when he had been cooped up at home. Life had only just become much more meaningful now that he had his own things to do and things he wanted to do. Bruce said that he would invite her for some fun at his birthday party next time. Of course, Rachel agreed but said, I have to see if I have time. I'm afraid that I won't be allowed to take leave from filming. Bruce immediately asked, Who dares to stop you from taking leave? Why don't I ask the director whether he'll let you take a break? Good Lord! Rachel frantically held him back. If he went to tell the director, was there any way the director could refuse? Okay, okay, okay. I promise that I'll ask him. Don't go there and scare the director. After chatting for some time, Rachel escorted Bruce out. She still had to film, so she could not let him stay for too long. Patty saw Bruce leave as well. When she saw Rachel chatting and laughing as they walked out, she thought to herself that Rachel was really good at seducing people. Furthermore, the people she had seduced were people that others could not seduce. She really did not know why these men had all gone blind. She thought that Rachel was indeed a tough opponent. 
Initially, when Rachel had been away, she had sullied Rachel's name quite a bit in secret. The moment Rachel returned, she saw Rachel as her enemy because everyone compared her to Rachel. At the time, she single-mindedly wanted to defeat Rachel, but she had not considered her status and background. Now that her background was emerging bit by bit, and her social connections in the past were emerging little by little as well, Patty was becoming more and more troubled. She was so vexed that she could die. Why was Rachel so difficult to deal with? During the filming, Rachel's scenes were all with Patty. The first scene today was also one such scene. Patty played the role of the older sister in this television series. From the moment Rachel's character was born, the older sister Natalie suppressed the younger sister Nadine. However, after Natalie caused Nadine's death, her soul possessed another body, and she then obtained revenge. Patty even felt that everyone would mock Rachel when the older sister ended up looking younger than the younger sister, since she was younger than Rachel by two years, but was playing the role of the older sister. However, everyone started admiring and praising Rachel once she had donned her period costume. Rachel looked like a 16-year-old girl, even though she had given birth and was even older than Patty by two years. This was especially so after she put on makeup. She deliberately showed lively expressions and seemed even younger. Her skin was soft and not much light was needed to make her skin appear fair and without blemishes. Even her eyes appeared clear. On the other hand, after Patty put on her outfit and makeup, she looked older than Rachel by more than a few years. Her heavy makeup had covered the original color of her skin and made her skin look much heavier. Her age, which was not usually apparent when she was not wearing makeup, became even more obvious now. The moment Patty saw this, she quickly said to the person beside her, Seriously, what makeup artist did you guys hire? Her makeup was done so well, but mine is like this. What ulterior motives do you have? No one in the production team dared to say a word. Of course, in their hearts, they wanted to say, it's not the makeup artist's fault at all. It's because your face is not in good condition. You will only look 16 with heavy makeup. Because the television series contained scenes where her character was 16 years old, she naturally had to look more youthful. It was fine if the makeup looked heavy during filming. Anyway, they would use brighter lights when the time came, and her skin would look fair and soft on television. However, Rachel was different. Her skin was fair, clear, and soft to begin with. She needed only one layer of makeup to appear on the screen, so of course it was different for her. Rachel ignored her. Filming was filming. Once she had gotten into the role, no one would care about who she was. However, Patty really immersed herself in the role. Her malicious manner on screen seemed incredibly genuine. As everyone watched Patty act, they even worried that Rachel would be unable to keep up with her since she had not acted for a long time. However, when it was Rachel's turn, she immediately raised her spirits. She could not quite grasp the right feeling initially and quickly did another take. Immediately thereafter, she found the right feeling in the second and third takes. She seemed to have turned into the Rachel of the past. She finished all her scenes in one take and made the director extremely satisfied. When filming ended, the director shouted for them to wrap up. He hastily pulled Rachel over and said, As expected of Rachel, you got immersed in filming so quickly. Rachel smiled and said, I'm still a little lackluster, but I will try to get into it as soon as possible. I really enjoy working with actors like you. Seriously. I never have to worry that you won't be able to perform up to par. You're just so fast. You film your scenes in one take, and a hint is all that is needed. Director, you're praising me too much. 
At the side, Patty watched the director praise Rachel nonstop and felt miffed. She asked the person beside her, What's the big deal? That's all there is to her. It's not as if she acted so well that flowers started sprouting. Precisely. The director is just flattering her because he knows that she has some power. That night, Rachel read the script in her hotel room. Although the director was very satisfied with her performance today, Rachel could sense that there was nevertheless something amiss with her. She had been focusing too much on acting, making her appear to be acting instead. She would probably still need a few days to really get back into the right condition. Just then, someone started knocking on the door. She opened the door only to see that Aaron was here. He had sneaked in and even looked like a man having an affair. He looked around and hastily squeezed himself into the room. As she looked at him, Rachel momentarily found him very amusing. She pulled him in and said, <laughs> This feels so exciting. Aaron looked at her with a deadpan expression. Wasn't it because she insisted on staying with the production team? She even made him have to sneak out in the middle of the night to meet his own wife, as if he was having an affair. But it was all because she was Rachel. He, the head of the great Nixon family, had truly done every embarrassing thing possible for her sake. He stood there and pulled down her chin. So, compensate me accordingly, you hear me? In the middle of the night, Aaron rushed back home again. At the door, he looked at Rachel longingly. He wanted to sleep while hugging her. He wanted to be able to kiss her sleeping face the moment he woke up, but he had no choice but to leave now. She said, That's enough anyway. I'm going home in a few days. Wait patiently for me at home. Remember to call me. He looked down and tapped her chin. Yes, yes. You're such a nag. Rachel smiled. He turned his cheek to her and refused to leave. She understood what he meant only after pondering for a bit. He was so childish. She quickly looked around. Seeing that the corridor was completely dark and empty, she then went on her tiptoes and pecked his cheek. In the opposite room, Patty was just about to leave her room when she saw this scene. The two of them clung to one another in front of the door. It seemed that Aaron had been here earlier and was about to leave. He was reluctant to leave and stayed there, embracing her and kissing her fiercely. It was a long time before he released his hold on Rachel, who was panting with a blissful flush on her face. He told her to go in first before himself leaving. Patty scoffed before walking back in. She wanted to go out, however she had no choice but to retreat when she saw that Aaron's bodyguards had already swiftly caught up with him. She felt slightly discontent. She felt that Aaron was really sweet to Rachel. It was seriously very uncommon to encounter such thoughtful sponsors. A large majority of the men she had met behaved extremely arrogantly to their mistresses. They thought of themselves as the Lord and Master and expected her to do exactly as they said. However, a person as formidable as Aaron actually treated Rachel as if they were a couple deeply in love. It was really upsetting. On Bruce's birthday, Rachel asked the director for a day off. Of course, the director instantly agreed and absolutely did not put her in a difficult position at all. Rachel took Blair with her. On the way to the Shepherd residence, Blair said, He has been the nominal owner of our company for so many years. I haven't even met him properly. Rachel said, That's really strange. So you've always transferred the dividends directly into his bank account in the past. We sent him a check by post each time, but Bruce had been doing quite well for himself recently. He probably doesn't care about the small dividends either. He opened quite several pubs and inns and even started some travel routes. He was a sports ambassador a while back and appeared on media everywhere. 
He captured the hearts of so many teenage girls. Everyone is saying that Bruce's chances of defeating his older brothers and becoming the successor of the family will increase greatly if he goes on like this. Rachel recalled how depressed and strange he had been in the past. She felt very happy for him as well, seeing that he had already changed so much. The two of them went in, but seemed to catch sight of Avery in the distance. Blair frantically said, Go, go. Avery is over there. She's so annoying. The two of them went in straight and could not be bothered to greet Avery. Avery got out of the car while the people beside her provided her support and carefully held an umbrella for her. The maids of the Smith family were all used to looking after the ill young miss. She even walked very carefully with numerous eyes on her. She was about to go in when a pack of cigarettes suddenly dropped beside her. A man quickly bent down to pick up the cigarettes and immediately blocked Avery's path. Avery was shocked. Beside her, her maid was even more shocked and immediately shouted, Hey, smelly old man, what are you doing? Do you know how to look in front of you? The person who picked up the cigarettes was indeed an old man. His hair was gray and his clothes and body stank. It seemed that he had not showered for many days. The moment he stood up, many people instinctively wanted to retreat to avoid him. However, the old man calmly picked his cigarettes up from the ground and looked at the person in front of him. Hey, are you the young madam of the Nixon family? Avery froze. The young madam of the Nixon family? Did he mean Aaron's wife? Of course, she wanted to say that she was. It sent a pang through her heart. She felt that the old man was literally being sarcastic. She glared at the old man and said, I'm not. Oh, you're not. The old man glanced at her and assessed her from head to toe. They did not know what he was thinking. One of the maids hastily shoved him aside. Just move aside. You're so stinky. Your odor is overwhelming our young miss. Good Lord, what kind of beggar are you? Do you know where you are? How dare you come to this place? This is a car belonging to the Smith family. Are you blind? How could you not know? The old man glanced at the car behind them and took a few steps backward upon being pushed. He yelled, Seriously, I was just asking. Another maid said, That's enough. Why talk about the family with a beggar like this? What does he know? My point exactly. Let's go. We should stay away. There are so many germs. Avery looked at him in loathing as well. She thought that he was really too dirty. She lifted her dress and walked many steps ahead. Then she looked down and took a whiff of her body as if she was worried about being contaminated with his body odor. She turned around to look at him strangely. She wondered why this person was looking for Rachel. Was he related to Rachel in some way? However, Rachel did not come from a good family, and her relationship with her family was not good either. It was also conceivable for her to have a relative like this. After Rachel entered the venue, Bruce immediately came to welcome her. Rachel presented him with her gift, and at the same time, introduced him to Blair. This is Blair. You've probably corresponded through email. Of course, I know her, Bruce continued. I often see her on television. The First Lady has graced me with her presence, but I didn't notice at all. It's truly an honor for me today. Blair smiled and said, I'm not here as the First Lady today. I came to pay my respects to the owner of the company. Good lord, I'm just the nominal owner. You guys are the real kingpins. They exchanged greetings and he invited Rachel and Blair to the main table. The birthday party seemed to be on a large scale. Rachel looked at Bruce. You're really a wealthy businessman. Even your birthday party is so grand. Bruce said, 
I'm a businessman, after all. I have to look for various excuses to hold gatherings all the time, so that I can seize the opportunity to gather power. This is a good excuse that I can use once a year. Why shouldn't I use it? But you guys can just eat. You don't have to bother with other people. Rachel and Blair smiled in disbelief. When Avery saw that Bruce had actually invited them in, her slight displeasure showed on her face. Upon seeing this, the maid beside her took advantage of the situation and asked, What's wrong with young master? I can't believe he actually invited those two women inside. Avery did not like the heat. Even if the air conditioner in the room was switched on, she was still holding a fan to fan herself. She looked exactly like a rich young heiress who had so delicate a constitution that she could not stand a gust of wind. I guess they're close, she said in a bitter tone. Her maid started cursing. Close? Can their relationship be better than his relationship with you? It's because that woman has nothing to her name and flew up to the branches and became a phoenix in one day. That's why she quickly curries favor as much as she can with everyone she meets. Our young miss has never needed to do that because the Smith family does not need to please anyone. Avery felt the same way too, so she looked on and did not say anything else. While Rachel and Blair sat there eating, the old man outside had yet to leave and kept walking back and forth. The bodyguards of the Shepherd family had noticed something wrong for a long time. One of them walked towards him slowly and said, Hey, old man, if you're looking for money, you're in the wrong place. Go elsewhere to beg. The old man looked at the bodyguard. Is the young madam of the Nixon family here yet? The bodyguard frowned and looked at him. Wasn't Rachel the young madam of the Nixon family? Many people were aware that Rachel was on good terms with their third young master. Since she was here today, she was treated as a VIP guest as well. But this beggar in front of him wanted to meet Rachel? Why do you want to meet the young madam of the Nixon family? You want to meet her just because you know who she is? Go, go, go. Don't add trouble around here. I'll give you as much money as you want. Leave quickly. The bodyguard quickly threw him a red hundred dollar bill so that he would not loiter around this area. All the people who were here were prominent officials and eminent personages. It would be so bad for them to see him. However, the old man did not take the money and continued looking at him. Help me. Ask if the young madam of the Nixon family is here yet. Hey, old man. You still refuse to listen to reason, even after I've advised you kindly and even gave you money. You don't believe that I'll get people to take you away? He asked, How do you know that the young madam of the Nixon family doesn't know me? Aren't you afraid that she will blame you if you take me away? <laughs> you say that the young madam of the Nixon family knows you? That's enough. Leave quickly. I'm not leaving. You can take me away if you want to, but don't regret it. The old man found a place to sit and immediately sat himself down. The bodyguards fumed and glared at him in anger. They had encountered an unreasonable person. However, one of them looked at him and still did not dare to actually take him away. He asked, why don't we just go and ask Miss Rachel whether she knows this person? What if she knows him? We shouldn't make a mistake. No way. How could someone as dignified as Miss Rachel know an old man like this? We can't afford a single mishap. Go and ask quickly. Inside, Rachel heard the news in no time. She asked in confusion, Someone is looking for me. Yes, he's right outside. We're not sure if you know him, so we didn't dare to chase him away. Rachel's eyes darted. Then she said, All right, I'll go out and take a look. When she came out, she saw an old man from afar. He was sitting there, his face dirty and unfamiliar. 
However, seeing that he looked very pitiful, Rachel nevertheless walked towards him, even though she did not know him. Sir, are you looking for me? Hearing the lively voice, the old man looked up and saw a beautiful face looking at him strangely. Even though her face was a little unfamiliar, she was very polite. The old man said, You, are you the young madam of the Nixon family? Yes, I am. Are you looking for me, or are you looking for the young madam of the Nixon family? Are you looking for me regarding the Nixon family, or are you looking for me? Rachel wondered if it had something to do with the Nixon family, since he kept repeating that he was looking for the young madam of the Nixon family. The old man stood up and looked at her up and down as if examining her. Then he said, I'm looking for you. You're looking for me. Do you know me? I do know you, but... His stomach grumbled as he spoke. He patted his stomach awkwardly, causing dust to fly all around his stomach. His clothes were too dirty, and he appeared slightly disheveled. As Rachel looked on, she could not just accept this. She asked him, Sir, don't you have a home? Where is your house? Home? He sighed and looked straight ahead. I used to have one. I may have one now, too, but I often just pretend that I don't have one. Don't you think that having a home is very tiring? Rachel looked at the old man and said solemnly, Yes, sir. It's very tiring to have a home, but you must think of it this way. If you are tired and your family members and wife live well, then your fatigue is worth it, too. The important thing is not whether you work or not, but whether you know what you want to achieve. I work hard to get more money so that my family members can live blissfully with me. That's enough. Having a home is not very tiring. You're tired only because you're thinking too much. Rachel thought that he had a home, but he had run away from home because he wanted to avoid his family due to the immense stress that he was under. Thus, after talking to him, she asked again, Then, why are you looking for me? She felt that many people sought her out ever since she had become a public figure. Some of them were very unreasonable, while others indeed made her heart ache for them. Unfortunately, she was just a person, and not a charity organization. She was not the president, either. She could not help so many people. The old man seemed deep in thought as he looked at her. I'm not looking for you for any reason. I just came to take a look since you've started acting again. What the hell? So he was her fan? Rachel looked at this old man in disbelief. She felt that it was probably her first time meeting such an old fan, too. Regardless, she nevertheless said, Sir, let me take you to change your clothes first. She pulled the old man's clothes and walked in front of him. The old man became much more obedient and followed her into a hotel. As her company staff was still trailing after her, she was not too concerned either. She instructed someone to buy a simple suit of clothes first, and then told them to go in and help the old man to change his clothes. When the old man finished changing his clothes and came out, Rachel immediately saw that he looked much more refined after, even though he still looked down and out. This made her even more certain that this old man had probably run away from home because of the stresses of life. Furthermore, he may even have been a very wise person before he left. Sir, I'll take you out for a meal first. Oh, really? I would be very grateful. No problem. Go home quickly once you've eaten. I think that your family members must miss you terribly as well. No matter how stressed you are, go home and have a good chat with them. They will probably understand where you're coming from now. After all, there must be a mutual understanding among family members. 
she took him to a nearby restaurant and ordered several delicious dishes, most of which were fish and meat. The old man was genuinely hungry. He finished off the dishes neatly and quickly. Rachel also ate a bit, but not too much, since she had already eaten at Situ's earlier. The old man wiped his mouth and said, I'm really sorry. I came to look for you and even made you treat me to a meal. Dear me, you ate at the same table as me, but did not look down on me at all. It looks like you're a nice lady. <laughs> That's enough. No one looks down on you. You're clean now. There's no reason to look down on you. Come on, why don't you tell me where you live? Then I can send you home. She brought her staff with her and went out with the old man. The old man looked at her. Did you come alone? All these people came with me. She pointed to her staff members. N no, I, I mean, are you the only one from your family who came? Oh, yes? The old man shook his head with a face full of regret. At that moment, he saw Blair come out from inside. Rachel, why didn't you go back in? Did anything happen? No, I just met an old mister. I'll go back in soon, Rachel said. Blair looked at the old man in slight suspicion. Just then, she saw the people from the Smith family walk out. After giving Bruce his present, Avery said that she was feeling unwell and was about to leave. When Avery saw Rachel at the door and saw that the old man who had earlier been looking for the young madam of the Nixon family was actually also at the door, she could not help but look at them in curiosity. The old man's appearance had changed completely. He definitely looked much cleaner. Only his hair was still a mess, and he still looked like a beggar. Avery's maids saw this too. One of them scoffed and said, Wow, just now this beggar was at the entrance looking for the young madam of the Nixon family. I said that the Nixon family was such a prominent family. There's no way their young madam would have anything to do with a beggar. Well, it looked like I guessed wrong earlier. Another maid immediately joined in. Exactly. She's here now. You guessed wrong. Have you forgotten young Madam's family background? It's also conceivable that she would have relatives and friends who aren't doing well. Rachel heard their sarcastic remarks one by one. She smiled grimly and looked at Avery who was standing behind them and acting innocent while letting her maid speak recklessly. Rachel asked, who lets their dogs out without a leash? and allows them to bite people randomly. The maids immediately looked at her. You! They did not expect Rachel to be so disrespectful and insult them by calling them dogs without any qualms. She was just the young madam of the Nixon family. What kind of family background did she have? She was being way too arrogant. She was just banking on Aaron's love for her. However, it was also precisely because she was the young madam of the Nixon family that they genuinely dared not to retort, even though she had insulted them. Blair said, There are so many crazy dogs around in this day and age. Fortunately, we don't have any on our side, otherwise it would be bad if we got infected. Forget it. We still have to be wary of dogs' owner if we want to hit them. We're letting them off also because of their owner. Anyway, you're right. We won't get infected either. Hearing this, the maids knew that it was a thinly veiled insult aimed directly at Miss Avery. She did not even have any self-awareness of what she was. How dare she insult their young miss? Rachel was way too audacious. Did she not know exactly what kind of family the Smith family was? Hey! Who did you say got infected? I think you're the one who got infected by that dirty old man behind you. Your mouth is so foul! Rachel asked, Who are you talking about? I'm talking about you! 
Rachel immediately slapped her. Upon being slapped, the maid shouted. Avery's eyes immediately widened. How dare she simply hit a maid of the Smith family? It was akin to directly shaming the Smith family. You, Rachel! How could you hit her? Avery yelled. Rachel patted her hands as if trying to brush off the dirt on her hands. Avery, I hit her on your behalf. By spouting nonsense, they embarrassed the Smith family. Wouldn't people say that the family does not discipline their subordinates? You... Avery's face began to turn red. Even so, these are the affairs of our family. They are none of your business either. Rachel said, If they are the family's private matters, of course, I have nothing to do with them. However, they insulted me, so I have the power to settle this matter. Avery, did you think that I'm the kind of person who would cower after being insulted for no reason? If they just walked past me without a word, this incident would not have happened either. However, they already offended me from just now. Thus, this slap is just a simple greeting. If they continue to look down on me like this, I will show them how a country bumpkin like me can make an unreasonable scene. You, you... Of course, Avery could not argue against her. Meanwhile, the maids, especially the one who had been slapped, didn't dare to start a fight with Rachel, even though they were extremely furious and had been embarrassed in front of everyone. She was indeed the young madam of the Nixon family, and Aaron even doted on her and her alone. The maid did not want to die yet. Therefore, she could only pull Avery by her arm in fury and said, Miss, let's go. While we're at it, we can go and tell Mr. Nixon that the young madam of the Nixon family even has a dirty old man following her and embarrassing the Nixon family. Seriously, she said while looking at the old man behind them. The old man broke into a laugh. <laughs> I do want to see what Aaron will say if he sees me embarrassing the Nixon family here. Rachel froze. Aaron? Did she just hear the old man call Aaron by his name? Rachel looked at the old man. Sir, what did you call Aaron? Do you know him? Dear me, I don't know him, but I can't say the same now. Anyway, call him here and he will tell you who I am. Rachel blinked. Did he really know Aaron? Just then, one of the bodyguards beside Rachel suddenly came forward. Are you old President Nixon? Old Nixon, he suddenly said. Rachel turned around to look at her bodyguard. He suddenly went down on his knees in a moment of agitation. With a thud, he knelt directly in front of him. Old Nixon, you're finally back! Old President Nixon? Tears were about to stream down the bodyguard's face. He looked up at the old man. I'm one of the guards whom you personally appointed back then. Later, after you left, I followed the young master instead. When you left, young master was only 16 years old. Now young master has already gotten married and has a child. You've been away for so many years. You're finally back. Everyone was immediately stunned. The old man in front of them was part of the Nixon family? Furthermore, he was even the Nixon family's... He was Aaron's father? Rachel stood there in a daze and did not react for a long time. Now that she thought about it, she found it strange. He was not one of her weird fans because he had repeatedly said that he wanted to see the young madam of the Nixon family and not Rachel. She had not mulled over it in detail earlier. At this moment, he looked slightly more clean and neat in his new change of clothes. Although he had already aged, his brow bone, eyebrows, and face shape had subtle similarities to Aaron's. In particular, despite looking dispirited and sad, there was an indifferent aura about his face. 
He was like the sail that fluttered with the wind and allowed itself to be carried along by the tide. He would not at all feel inferior because of taunting from other people. Instead, he gave off the air of wanting to watch the fun. Indeed, he did not look like a beggar who had been in dire straits all along. He did not recoil from people at all and did not fear anyone either. He seemed instead like a monk who transcended worldly affairs. Are you Aaron's father? Rachel looked at him probingly. The old man stood there with his arms behind his back. He smiled with his lips pressed together. I just wanted to see my grandson, but unfortunately, you didn't bring him with you. So that was what had happened. Rachel had always been on very good terms with Pamela, but she had never met Aaron's father. This was actually her first time meeting him. She could not believe that they were meeting in such a situation. Rachel wondered in surprise why Aaron's father had unexpectedly appeared like this now, that he had returned home after being away for so long. Meanwhile, the rest of the people present were immediately about to piss themselves out of shock as well. This old beggar was Aaron's father, which meant that he was a member of the Nixon family. Back then, the old president, Alexander Nixon, had previously been all-powerful as well. Later on, he did not really bother with company affairs and eventually went to travel around the world, paying no attention to worldly affairs. As a result, Aaron took over the business of the Nixon family at the mere age of 16 and became the president of the Nixon Industries. When they recalled the way they had treated the former head of the Nixon family, all of them cowered and momentarily wanted to just go inside quickly and get out of his sight. Opposite them, Avery was dumbfounded. At this moment, she hastily walked towards him and said, Uncle, so it's uncle. Earlier, I just felt that you didn't look like a beggar. With one look, I knew you were not an ordinary person. Alexander chuckled and said, Yes, it's me. Unfortunately, my appearance has brought shame to the Nixon family. In an instant, the Smith family's maids turned completely pale. Old, old President Nixon? I'm the one who's blind. I failed to recognize you and I didn't know you because I lacked knowledge and experience. I really misspoke earlier. I really misspoke. The maid, who had even cursed at them earlier, looked as if she was on the verge of tears. Seeing that old master remained silent, the maid sensed Avery's gaze and was so frightened that she hastily slapped herself. I was blind not to recognize you and said such foul words. I beg you for your forgiveness. On one hand, she did not want to be blacklisted by a member of the Nixon family. A person of such high status could trample on her like he was killing an ant. On the other hand, even if he did not take it to heart, there was no way that Avery would still let her off when they returned home. She was just a maid who spoke according to the situation. But she was also a maid who would be kicked out of the household at a time like this. Alexander scoffed and obviously could not be bothered with her. He just turned to look at Rachel. Since you know who I am now, I should be able to get a chance to see my grandson, right? Rachel froze before hastily saying, Of course you can. You can meet him whenever you want. His name is George, and he's in kindergarten now. Kindergarten? Just kindergarten? Alexander did not think so. Children of the Nixon family would not attend kindergarten only. It was the same for Aaron, too. From the age of three, he began attending various training courses until he became an adult. The different skills that he had learned were unimaginable to outsiders. He thought that Aaron would definitely nurture his successor in the same way, too. Huh? Alexander looked at Rachel. She was not the kind of person who could put up a front. 
the complete confusion on her face right now was not a pretense. It's nothing. Let's go. Rachel quickly instructed someone to tell Aaron the news before she got into the car. Blair followed suit quickly as well. She turned to look at Avery, whose face was ashen pale, and snickered internally. Served her right. Avery restrained her emotions for a long time. It was only after she watched all of them leave that she finally could not bear it any longer. She turned around and gave her maid another slap. Huh! What a bunch of useless people who were unable to achieve anything and only ruined things. However, it was a fact that no one could have imagined old Alexander to be so strange. He went to become a beggar for no reason instead of being the wealthy man that he was. The members of the Nixon family immediately found out that old Alexander had just returned. David Nixon was in his room when a maid came in directly and said, Old Master, young Master Alexander Nixon is back. What? Young Master Alexander has just returned. He's right outside. Are you going to visit him? David Nixon stood up instantly. His wrinkled eyes gazed straight ahead, momentarily agitated, and then momentarily dim. They darted around in a complicated pattern as if he had suddenly recalled many things. His return at a time like this was not the right time. The Smith family was still watching him like a tiger watching its prey, a constant threat to him. His return at this juncture, that secret had been kept under wraps for so many years, would it be unearthed all of a sudden? Of course, he did not want that to happen, even though he knew that he had gone overboard when he thought about it now. However, what was done had already been done, and the incident had passed. He did not want the incident to be dug out again. Why did things that had been buried for so many years have to be brought up now? Back then, Alexander and the old master had fallen out. Thereafter, he started to run away for no reason. So many maids in the family had never even seen this master of theirs. This continued until the year Aaron turned 16. Alexander left the house for good and never returned again. They only heard that he had gone to travel around the world. He would be at some place one day and then somewhere else the next day. But there was no way of knowing where exactly he was. Thus, upon hearing that he was back now, many of the maids wanted to catch a glimpse of him to see who exactly this young master was after disappearing for so many years. That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.